Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Welcome. Be holy. Be perfect community. Thank you for tuning in. The Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. May you bless, be blessed. May the Lord shine his faith, face toward you and give you peace and strength in Jesus' name. Our topic today, isn't that a funny mouth? Isn't that, that just constantly going? Our lips, our lips, our lips. Mm -mm -mm. If we just knew how much power we had in our lips. The topic today is lips, the snare, the snare of his soul, the snare of his soul, the snare of man's soul. Now, Proverbs 18, chapter 18, verses 6 through 8, chapter 11, verse 13, chapter 13, verse 3, and chapter 20, verse 19. It is a great offense to the Lord for us to use our lips, our mouth, in a way that it negatively impact the kingdom of God. And a lot of us have no control whatsoever over what we say. And we tell secrets. We tell uh, people's private lives when we do not have the permission to do so. We take control over a person's life because they shared something with us in confidence, or even if they didn't say in confidence, that means that we, unless they told you, well, you can go and blast this over Facebook, or you can blast this on YouTube, it's okay. You do not have, we do not have permission. We do not have permission to discuss someone else's life. We don't have that permission unless they give it to us. And even when they give it to us, if it's going to cause damage to them in any way, we shouldn't repeat it. We should not repeat it. We should learn that our mouth is a creative force, a creative force for the good and for the bad, for good and for evil. Now, Leviticus, 1916. This is a command from the Lord. You shall not go around as a gossip, a talebearer among your people, and you are not to act against the life of your neighbor with slander or false testimony. I am the Lord. That's a command. That is a simple command. You know, and a lot of us don't understand what gossip is, and we really don't care because it gives us power, and we don't want to say that we feel that we have some control. We may not even know it. Our, our life may be uh, so far from God in this area that we don't even understand what we're doing. So what is gossip? What is a talebearer? Let's define that. A talebearer is defined as un, unconstrained conversation or report about other people, typically involving details that are not confirmed as true. The person giving the details does not have permission to convey them. Gossip, talebearer, is toxic. It ruins people's reputation and produces mistrust, cultivate unsafety among the congregation. It stops the answers to prayer because it is a sin. Gossip, a talebearer, and those that's listening to it create a crime scene, create sin in their lives. Now, it is uh, known when we study out the word of God that God considers terror in the category as murder. And why is that? Because a person that is a gossiper, they kill themselves, they kill the listener, and they destroy the person that they're talking about. See, so that person becomes a murderer and you become an accessory to murder. And so therefore a crime scene has been created. And if, if we think that we are going to be getting something from God or hearing something from God in our prayers, forget it because we have created a crime scene. And until we repent, until we repent, we, uh, 
we we we're going to have problems with the Lord. So let us understand that gossip is a crime scene. Gossip is a sin. A terror a tear bearer is a constant sinner and those that listen to it are constant sinners. So we need to stop this. We need to repent. We subtract from people when we talk about their private lives. We create an image in the listener's uh, mind uh, well, on a negative way about this person, especially especially if it's in a prayer group, because this, or even in the congregation, these are places that should be safe for individuals, but oh, it's a crime scene, so I can't be safe. So in Proverbs 18 and 6, a fool's lip brings contention and strife, and his mouth invites a beating. What? Yes, his mouth, his lips, his conversation invites a beating. A beating from who? A beating from the devil because you've created a crime scene and in that crime scene that you've given the devil at access to you, to the person that's listening to you, and to and, and the person that told you uh, in confidence or whether it was in confidence or not, you still don't have the permission to discuss it unless that individual gave you specific permission to discuss their life. If someone asks you to pray for them, that don't give you permission to disclose everything that they discuss with you. That is simply giving you information about what's going on in their life. We should be intelligent enough, spiritually mature enough not to discuss people personal lives with other people that creates an unsafe environment and this is why this is why you have people not coming to the fellowship not coming to the congregation not coming to church because we make it unsafe for them we ask them do you need prayer and they say yes then you want to get all into the details and and a and in front of a hundred or two or three hundred people, <laughs> so they can go and discuss this. <laughs> oh, come on! How 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 is that a safe place? Stop it! It causes contention. It causes strife. Why? Because the Bible says so. And it, it invites a beating. It invites the consequences of this sin. Now, what happens? Because the Bible says in Matthew chapter eighteen, verse nineteen to twenty, when to agree on earth when to agree when it's for the good or when it's for evil it creates something and it has power over people and we should stop this a fool's mouth is his ruin and his lips are the snare of his soul isn't that something it's a trap for his soul it's a trap for his soul if we don't know how to regulate to regulate what we say. See, we create a toxic, a, a viral effect in our conversation, in our life, in our environment, in our homes, in our congregation, which is a snare to the soul, to the soul of the person that is speaking, to the soul that the person is listening, and to the soul of the person that's being discussed so we should say stop i am not going to help you create a crime scene i need to get my prayers answered i need to stay in right standing with the lord i want to be healed i want to be delivered whatever's going on i don't want to hear it let's stop it we need to begin to stop this madness Stop the snaring of the soul. Stop chaining our prayers so they will not be answered. Stop chaining our family members, our friends to all of this sin, this crime of gossip. See, we all understand what we're doing. Be why? Because we do not study out the word. We think that a tail bearer is someone dragging a tail. No, it's not. It's your mouth dra dragging words with your mouth that you don't have control over or that we don't have control over. So we need to stop this. We need to break the chain of gossip wherever it is and say, look, I'm sorry. 
Uh, but I don't want to be a partaker of another person's sin. And gossip is a sin. Even if you're in, in your prayer group, even if they are in a prayer line, you know, because some people, they are just, they just don't know. They don't know any better. So somebody got to train us how to control our lips, how to control our mouth so that we are not snaring our soul, that we're not putting our soul, our spirit in chains. So when we put our soul in chains, when our soul is snared, our spirit is snared, our body is snared. There is a something that will be produced in our bodies when we do this every time we speak without permission about someone it causes a problem in our life so we need to stop we really need to stop you know now the word proverbs 18 and 8 say the words of a whisperer a whisperer is a what a gossiper a tail bearer are like dainty morsel to the greedy to the greedy eaten to the greedily eaten. They go down into the innermost chamber of the body to be remembered and moosed over. And in other words, they are creating something on the inside of you. They are creating, you may be sick and you don't know why you're sick. Well, ask the Lord, is it because you heard gossip that you should have stopped or that you are a gossiper? See, we think, we think that God is playing, that he don't mean don't be a, a gossiper or don't be a talebearer, but that's not so. It is a crime. We create a crime scene. So when we hear stuff that is ungodly, and when I say ungodly, that means that it's a gossip. It can even be true. But if you don't have the permission, if it is not going to be edified to the hearer, to the listener, and even if it is, if it's about somebody else, you shouldn't be telling their story, that you don't have that power to tell their story. And when you take that power away from them, you become a thief. I become a thief. We can talk to people without going and telling their story. See, that's an uncontrolled individual. If we, uh, we go and we witness to somebody, we say that they need to be saved, they need, to, they need salvation, and then we go to the group and tell them all about their life. <laughs> Do you think that that person is going to come to the Lord? They don't trust you. We haven't showed them any reason to come to the Lord. They can't, we can't be trusted. You see, we don't understand what we're doing. We're talking about the devil and what he do. Let's look at what we do. See, every time we open our mouth, the devil have access to our words. He have access to our words, especially if they are negative if they are negative and sinful, he create an enemy that will come and torment, torment people. And that could be me, that could be you, that could be whoever you're trying to help. So we need to understand, we need to understand that we can be sick, we can have headaches, we can have migraines and all this stuff, and we be like, whoa, I just don't understand. Stand, I just don't understand. Well, go back to the Lord and ask him what is going on with your mouth and why is it that you're sick and nobody have any, there is no answer. The doctor don't have any answer for you. It could be that the crime of gossip, the crime of being a tail bearer. And Proverbs 11 and 13, he say, he who goes about as a gossiper, a tail bearer, reveals secrets, reveals secrets. But he who is trustworthy and faithful keeps a matter hidden, keeps a matter hidden. He who goes about as a gossiper reveals secrets. Therefore, do not associate with a, goss uh, uh, a gossip who talks freely or flatters. The Lord is playing. You know, he don't even want us to associate <laughs> When a person has a gospel or a tail bear, a person that always trying to be friendly, flattering, people see flattery. Flattery, you know, oh, that is just so good. Uh, woman of God, that is just so great, blah, blah, blah. That That's flattery. 
you know, because don't nobody, don't anyone do anything save for the power of God. So we should be thanking God. I'm not saying that we should take away from a man or a woman of God, but we should know that it's God that's doing the work. You know, it's God that's doing the work, and we should give him the glory. We should focus on the works of the Lord, the works of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus. That's what we should focus on, and we should stop and understand that a trustworthy and a faithful person keeps things hidden. The Holy Spirit will say that it's not something that should be revealed. You know, even though a person told told us these things, we need to ask the Holy Spirit. And when we finish the conversation with an individual, we and especially if they're asking us to pray for them or intercede for them, we need to ask them, well, what are you giving me permission to do? And, you know, and... If it was me, I was, I'm not giving you permission to do anything. All I'm doing is asking you to pray for me. You can't pray for me without revealing everything I just said to you. Don't pray for me. <laughs> Don't pray for me. Because if you got to have all this information, my medical records, <laughs> for you to pray for me, you're not hearing from God. So that means you're not going to pray through anyway. So no thanks. Have a nice day. You know, that's what we need to say. Because why do you need all this information to pray for people? I never did get that. Couldn't get it. Too many details. Why are we exposing people to other people's lives? That is just ridiculous, especially if we're doing this stuff, uh, you know, in our congregation and you got hundreds of people that are sitting around that's going to repeat what was said and going to bind the sickness or whatever the situation is to the person because what? Went to a three agree, huh, they're going to have what they agreed on, good or bad. If, you see, you, we, <laughs> Lord, help us, help us, Lord, help us, Lord. And then he says in Proverbs 13 and 3, whoever guards his mouth preserves his life, preserves his life. Who, who open his, his lip comes to ruin. Yeah, look at Mr. Ruin down there. And we want to know why. We have problems understanding the word of God. We have sickness in our bodies. We have problems with our finances. We have all these situations. And sometimes they can be allevi alleviated just by repenting of the sin of being a gossiper and a talebearer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't. We take it so lightly, we don't even understand what we're doing with our lips. And then we want to say that we're serving God. No, we're serving ourselves. Because when we take the information of another person's life and put it out there for someone else, that is a form of having power. And we may not want to admit that, but that is basically what it is. What do it take for, for someone who say that they are full of the Holy Ghost, sanctified, here we go, sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. Why do you need all those details about that individual? You don't need them because the Holy Ghost already know. Hmm, let's get real. Let's be honest with the people and stop playing games. Because whoever guards his mouth preserve his life. And so if we want to know why we're losing our life through sickness and disease. Just think, well, I probably am not guarding my mouth. I'm not guarding my mouth. See, these are indicators. This is what give the enemy access to us. Hear no evil, see no evil. What? Speak no evil. So what is that saying? Stop listening to a gossiper. Stop listening to a gospel, a tale bearer, hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. Don't repeat what you hear this sinning, sinful individual saying. <laughs> yes, they are sinful and they make you a part of their sin. See, see how easy it is for the enemy to put you in chain, to entrap you. So, <laughs> He don't need a chariot of demons, you know. All he got to do is wait for us to open our mouth. Just open your mouth and woo, you release your own madness. Yes.
So stop hindering your prayers with careless gossip. Stop hindering your prayers. Stop hindering the prayers of others. Stop causing others to sin because you don't have control over your mouth. You don't have control over your lips. I don't have control over my lips. If I don't have control over my lips, I cause others to sin. Anyone that will listen, I will cause them to sin, and I will bring harm to them. We need to be responsible. We need to repent of this grave, murderous sin. We need to repent of this grave, murderous sin. We need to repent of this grave, murderous sin sin in the name of Jesus. Father, we just thank you. We give you praise. Lord, teach us, teach us, teach us, instruct us on how to control our mouth so that it will be, it will not be a snare to our soul, our spirit, mind, and body. And we ask this in the name of Jesus. Lord, help us, cause us to understand our word, cause us to understand every action and that every action will produce a reaction our lips will produce an action that will cause a reaction and god i ask that you help us help us oh god help us and i ask this in the name of jesus God, we thank you, we praise you, and to the all-wise and mighty God who will keep us from stumbling and falling, for honor and majesty, our King, our King, glory, 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 glory. In Jesus' name, amen.